we have to have some other tools to our disposal. And if you've got a kid who's willing to bite and scratch and kick to not do something, and you're not willing to bite and scratch and kick to get him to do it, who's going to win? He's going to win. He doesn't have the same social context or the same understanding that we do. He's not going to be held back from doing whatever it takes. We are. We're only going to do what we feel comfortable doing to get what we need. And if not, we're just going to walk away and say, sorry, we can't teach this child. It's your, it's your problem, parents. You deal with it. And then as parents, you go, well, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm doing everything I can, but it's not working. And you try, and then you're getting scratched, and you're getting kicked, and you're getting beaten, until the point where you finally say, we just can't live our lives this way anymore. And that's when the kids end up going to a home, or they end up going somewhere where they get sedated, or um, you know, put on medications, or, or, or even worse things. Okay? And it's all happening because the child is capable of taking his desire to not go to that TV and push that button because he wants to be able to use the remote control and never have to get off his butt. He wants that so strong that we run out of tools. We don't know what to do. And what the ABA procedure does with verbal behavior, it allows us to change that thing around to show him that, you know what, in very simple and easy small ways, we show him that pushing the button is not so bad. In fact, for most of you who are older, you lived a life where you didn't have a remote control. How many of you remember before remote controls? <laughs> I do. Yeah, you're all like, oh, but, uh, <laughs> old. I'm 41 years old. And uh, I remember the very first remote control I ever saw was for a DVD player, and it had a long cord <laughs> all the way to the thing. So it was the coolest thing when a friend of mine had it. We were in high school. And a friend of mine had it. We, you'd go up to his house, and he'd get the DVD player out, and then he'd pull out this long thing, and he'd walk it over here, and he'd sit down, and we'd be like, oh, this is so cool. Look at this. <laughs> Nowadays, we're willing to spend an hour, we're willing to go to the store in another town to buy a new remote, rather than, or look for the remote under the cushions for an hour, rather than get up and go touch that button, which we did a thousand times every day as kids, before we had the other thing. So there's nothing innately wrong about it, yet we just get programmed to believe that, hey, this is something that I, I deserve. This is my right. I don't have to get up and touch that. I've already, you know, why should I have to? I know I don't have to be this way, so why should I let it be this way? And it's the same thing that's causing these children that we're working with to fight us tooth, nail, and scratch, to not have to give in on following instructions, using language, because these things are not easy for them. They're not easy. It's hard to learn to use language for some of these kids. It's hard to learn some of these things. And for them, it's like me saying to you, you know what? We're going to go run a marathon. You know what a marathon is, what I'm talking about? Running 26 miles or however many kilometers that is. Um, and you guys are like, yeah, right we are. Sure, sure we are. <laughs> well, chances are, I can't get you guys to go tomorrow and run a marathon. And I can't get you to start the process. And you would fight me pretty hard if I tried to drag you out there to run a marathon. But if I somehow was able to set it up where... Um, there were some really extremely reinforcing things at the end of the block. And I said, okay, we're going to run to the end of the block and you're going to get a free car. Would you be willing to get up and run to the end of the block? Possibly. Now I can set it up where, okay, now you run to the end of the block and back, and you're going to get something else, and something else is going to be available to you. And every time I just pushed it a little bit further, a little bit longer, and you started doing it because it was worth it. You know what? I hate running, but boy, I really like cars. Maybe I'll give it a try. And you start to do a little bit more and a little bit more. Before you know it, I'll have you running two or three miles. Before you know it, I might have you running five miles. And some of you may get to the point where you're able to run a marathon. Some of you, maybe not. Some of these kids we work with, we're not going to get all the way there. But some of these kids can get, to the, can get as far as you want to take them. If you're able to use the principles of behavior appropriately to push them in ways where they can consistently be successful and then be reinforced for being successful. Does this make sense? Yeah? All right, so let's watch the rest of this video. Protect Edgar. I got it. Protect Edgar. Mom, I do that. I do that. I do that. Okay. I do that. I do that. I do that. Remember, just getting him to eat this big one is a good is a good situation.
Schön, dann geben wir dir ein Stöckchen. Das ist die Katze. Wie macht die Katze? Miau. Prima, legst drauf. Anton, was ist das? Das ist ein Mach's besser, Anton. Was ist das? Ein Das ist der Löwe. Wie macht der Löwe? Mom's teaching is not perfect at this point. This is two months into the program, and yeah, if, if there's an ABA specialist or a therapist who's looking at this, they're going, well, they're not doing everything the way they should be doing it. There's better ways to do this. But ultimately, by taking the time to teach mom and dad how to do this and let them make some minimal mistakes as they're getting better and better at it, we're ultimately going to end up with, a, I believe, a much better outcome than if we would have just handed it over to a therapist who maybe came in right away and did it the best possible way but then left and was only able to do it three hours a day. Because mom and dad are going to do it 24 hours a day, or for however many hours he's awake, every interaction is going to be a positive learning interaction. They're going to be reinforcing the right choices, extinguishing the ones that are inappropriate, using punishment when necessary, giving prompting. And so mom is not doing perfect teaching here by any means. In fact, there's a lot of mistakes. And what we do in this consult is we start to teach her about her mistakes and fine-tune her teaching. But even with that, Look at the compliance has already changed. Now, he's not trying very hard. He's not focusing in on what the picture is and thinking to himself, what is that picture of? What he's saying is vow vow, which is his which is what a dog says. Because his favorite animal is the dog. So whenever she whenever she shows the dog, that's the one he gets excited about. So she's showing him a picture and he's saying vow vow. And she's saying, No, it's a cat. And she's he says, he looks at her, she says, cat, and he goes, sub. Well, things like letting him get away with just saying "sa" for cat stuff, instead of having him then say the whole word and that sort of thing, those are the, the weaknesses of the teaching still. But mom's teaching is getting better and better and better. And six months into this, or even more, nine months into this, or a year into this, mom's teaching is going to be as good or better than any co-therapist that has ever come into a family's home. Because she spent 24 hours a day thinking and working and has more motivation to be good at this than anyone else could. And she's, she's focusing on this child and this child only, not one of the five child children she's working with and having to keep all of these different programs in her head. She's just focused on these situations. Now, so he's making progress. He's sitting down. He's willing to participate. It's just the level of participation, the level of expectation is still a little low. And so we're teaching mom how to do that. Let's see how this plays out, and then we'll see what happens four months later. Okay. 